Hey everybody, this is round four of my playthrough of Black Fang's Dungeon in the Pathfinder Adventure card game. We've got one location closed, and we're very nearly closing the throne room. We know that the villain has escaped to either the Desecrated Vault or the Shrine of Lamashtu. We don't know which one, but we know it's somewhere there. We just need to kind of close this throne room. We also know from Harsk's uh, ranger ability that this is a ghost. See? It's a ghost. Well, Harsk has no chance of killing a ghost because he has no magic attacks. Well, actually, he did, didn't he? He had the dagger with a plus one, but he had to discard that. So now he has, again, no chance. And he's also been horrible at closing this location because it takes charisma and diplomacy, and his diplomacy is a d4, and it needs a, dipl a diplomacy of uh, six. Not good for Harsk. A little bit better for Kira. So I'm sending Kira in, ideally, to get rid of this ghost. Kira, as a cleric, has a special uh, power. Add 1d8 with the magic trait to your check to defeat a bane with the undead trait. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, okay, so that's 1d8 to any check. Okay. I did not realize that. I thought it was only in combat. And I also thought she had to discard for it. So that's just an always-on anti-undead ability, which seems really, really good. So she could actually... Well, let's look at... So we'll, we'll encounter the ghost. So she's got lots of options. She could go to combat and do a d6 strength plus the d8 for her magic, and then, because it's melee, she'd have a plus two. And that's all right. I mean, she would be essentially getting wanting a 10 across a d8 and a d6. It's not bad. But she could alternately do a Divine Wisdom check of eight. A Wisdom Divine uh, check of eight, which would be... That would be a d12 plus a 2, which doesn't seem all that great, but then apparently, if it's undead, she gets that d8 back. Then she only needs a 10, uh, needs a 10 across a d8 and a d12, which is better than the alternative. Tell me that's what she'll do. 12 and 17 plus 2. Well, that ghost is not only defeated... But it's really, really defeated. Like, its soul returns to wherever it is headed for. The Nine Hells, Gehenna, I don't know where, who this ghost is, but it's gone. So that's great. So that was what I was hoping for. Uh, but we still need to now, um, we, we need to close this location. And there's still two cards there. I guess I could bring Harsk back in and have him explore. I guess that would be the smart move, wouldn't it? Because otherwise he's going to some other location and risking revealing the, hench the, the villain, and then the villain could still, as long as this is not closed, it could still escape to this location. Yeah, I guess he should come here and explore. Fiery Weapon. This is an arcane spell. Oh, and divi divine. Alright, well, I wish I'd let her do this, but okay. So, Wisdom of 6. Or Intelligence. Okay, Intelligence 6. Harsk has an Intelligence of a d6. He could roll a 6. He rolls a 3. So, we don't get the Fiery Weapon. That's too bad. Okay, so it's the end of his turn, so he can scry. Alright, it's a weapon. Oh, a scimitar. That's kind of a classic... Uh, kind of classic weapon. Um, strength melee. Okay. Well, anyway. We'll tick over a timer card. Pass the turn over to... Kira. She'll reveal the card and encounter it. She needs a 7 
on a strength in melee. She rolls a one. So that does not, right? Or is it strength in melee? Yeah. And it was a seven. Okay. All right. So nothing there. But now we can close the location, which is the important thing. In order to close it, succeed at charisma or diplomacy six. Well, her diplomacy is, no, rather her charisma is a six. So I'll just roll four does not succeed. Ticking over the timer, we're going to send Harsk to this location, which is the desecrated vault. I guess I should read up about that. If you would defeat a bane with the undead, uh, undead trait here, roll 1d6. On one, the monster is undefeated. Ugh. Okay. Sobbing angels and snarling fiends leer from the crumbling heights of this overgrown mausoleum. Ages have passed since anyone cared for the bodies sheltered within, evidenced by the grim vault's dilapidated statuary and its forced open heavy stone doors. The echoes of something murmuring within suggest that whatever lurks here now doesn't rest in peace. Not a great place to be, but that's where he is. And he could start exploring now, but what if it's the villain? Then we've still got an open location. I think it's worth it. It's worth it's worth the, the not wasting a turn. Okay, cool. So dexterity, so that's a d8, and he needs a four. He rolled a one. They've just not been rolling. Oh, he, he's down a card. He needs to draw back up to five. Probably has been for a while. They just haven't been rolling that great at all, like ever, throughout this game. It's really, really strange how different this feels from Valeros and Sioni. And it's not even the rolls. It's just the... It's or Rather, it's not the, it's not the characters. It's the rolls. That's what I meant to say. Um, okay, so he's back up to five. It's the end of his turn, so he gets to scry before closing, and it's a, f uh, a potion, so that's good. So we know that he can explore again if he needs to before she gets out of the throne room. Kira's turn, so all she has to do at this location is try to beat this stupid thing. Oh, she got six. She closes the location. So that's great. Now we have kind of the ideal scenario, which is, for, for this party anyway, which is Harsk being at one location that could contain the villain, and Kira being at another location that could contain the villain. And then if one of them finds the, uh, the villain, the other one can hopefully temporarily hold down that location so that the villain can't escape, and therefore the villain is actually, actually defeated. Okay, Shrine of Lamashtu. We've been here before, if you've seen my Rise of the Rune Lord playthrough. Lamashtu, the mother of monsters, demon goddess of madness, monsters, and nightmares, numbers among the most vicious and terrifying of Galarian's deities. Here, worn steps lead to a blood-stained platform, on which stands an ancient altar, little more than a jagged block of black marble. A sense of malice and unnameable fear hangs over this place. And unfortunately, this is a pretty brutal location. If you encounter a blessing, you are dealt two points of mental damage that may not be reduced. So just for encountering a blessing, damage is going to be taken. All right, so that's where she is, and it's her turn, so she's going to explore. And it's an ancient skeleton, which means that everyone gets to encounter this. So that means, because this is a henchman, so if I close this location, from what I understand, what I'm meant to do is look through those cards and see if the villain is there. And if the villain is there, then I believe I'm supposed to put the villain in this deck. Something like that. I was reading the updated rules, and there seems to be some 
clarification about what what happens. I'll have to look it up if if all of this comes to fruition. So this is an undead creature. So right off the bat, she gets a magical d8 to defeat or to to help her defeat it. Um, she doesn't really have a weapon, but she's got some holy light. What does that do for us? Oh yeah, for combat, discard this card to roll your divine your your divine die plus two d six. I kind of feel like that's overkill for just a skeleton. Then again, maybe it's not. No, it's not because this is undead. I was thinking I should use this for black f fang. But Black Fang isn't undead, so this card would not do any good uh, for Black Fang. All right, so she's going to use this spell. And she gets to... That's going crazy. So she gets to roll a d6. No, I mean a d12, whatever that is. And then 2d6 for the spell. And then she can, she can add a d8 to... To combat? That's just... It's nuts. Okay, and then she might not even have to discard that card. So, I mean... I don't see how she could not kill this thing. Yeah, she does. And now she's gonna roll to try to recharge. Of course. Uh, so she doesn't recharge, so she does have to discard her Holy Light spell. That's fine. It's just... The rolls in this game are so bad. Um, and so... Well, yeah, okay, so I think... Is that the end of her turn? I think I can just end her turn there, yeah. So I'm gonna just end her turn, even though, technically... No, I'm... Darn it. No, I'm not going to end her turn. Okay. Because I forgot, she has to try to close that location. So first, Harsk is going to try to... He also has to summon the same monster, so I'm just using the same card. So he has to beat this thing with an uh, an 8. And I think... Is this the slashing and piercing? Yeah, slashing and piercing, the difficulty to defeat is increased by 3. So instead of 8, this is actually an 11. But I think that'll... Oh yeah, I've been here before, haven't I? Okay, so that he has a quarter staff that's not blood uh, that that is not piercing or slashing it's bludgeoning so that's a different kind of damage so he could go up against this thing with just uh, as just an eight um but doing so means that he has to roll a d6 because that's his strength die but his quarter staff would give him an additional d6 he could also discard this card to get another d6. Just trying to figure out whether that's worth it or not. I do not believe the success of this, of defeating this thing, has any bearing on whether we get to close the location. That's my understanding. The wording of the card just says, um, if, uh, uh, no, here it was. Uh, when your character encounters an ancient skeleton, uh, each other character... Oh, at that location. Oh. I've been playing that wrong. I've been making everyone fight an ancient skeleton. Um, Harsk isn't at that location. He doesn't have to do that at all. Cool. Alright. So Kira's uh, still here. Get back in that deck. So Kira, Kira is still here, hanging out. And she can, because she just defeated a henchman succeed at a divine six check or banish a blessing she doesn't have a blessing in her hand i happen to know that there's one uh, at the top of her deck but that doesn't do me any good so her divine is a d12 plus a two so she needs a six so she needs to roll a four or better on this d4 she'll roll a two eh, three close enough so she fails to close that location which is really detrimental. I mean, that that's that's not good at all. Like that's really really bad because um, that was the henchman. So failing that. Oh wait, we could we could add. 
we could add this card to try to close it. I mean, I've already rolled for it, so if I added this now, it would be cheating. That's too bad. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, unfortunately, I mean, I didn't think to use my blessing, so I failed that roll, so she did not close this location. The divine check six or banish a blessing, and she has no blessing to banish. So that was a plus two, you yeah, know, three. Yeah. Okay, well, that's that's that. It's too bad. Nope, it's not too bad. No, it is too bad. Okay, her, her divine is plus two. Fortitude is a plus three. Okay, so that was her turn then, I guess. We're running low on our timer deck. I don't see how we're doing this. I don't really foresee this scenario ending well for our heroes, unfortunately. It's Harsk's turn, so he can explore. It's a ghost, a potion of ghostly form. He can roll his d6 intelligence to, 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 to gain that, and he gains it. So he can evade a barrier with this, and then even explore again. I mean, that's nice, but not not probably what we really, really need. Um, I think I'm going to get rid of this short bow. Yeah, I think I'll get rid of the short bow. Uh, because his hand is at six, and it's the end of his turn. So he can only really have five in his hand. And then, of course, before his turn actually ends, he gets to scry. Pit of Mal Malfeshnikor. Um, that's really perfect because as it happens he can evade this with his potion so next turn that will be nice for him kira's turn flip over a blessing card and explore okay this is a mercenary difficulty to defeat the mercenary is increased by the adventure deck number doesn't matter there is no adventure deck number so uh, did she not? She didn't draw draw up to five at the end of her turn. Uh, okay, so that's fine, I guess. She's gonna need something. Let's see. Uh, she could discard this to evade a monster, but that would be silly. Although, you know what? Maybe it wouldn't be silly, because this is almost no good for... Well, what is this good for, though? Discard this card to choose a character at your location to evade a monster. Put the monster on top of the location deck. Yeah, this is actually a useless card. Um, in fact, all it's good for is to burn through our timer deck. In, in this scenario. Like, it just doesn't work for us. I, I guess she'll just go to, to, to battle with this, this mercenary. And to do that, she'll use her d6 for her strength. She's got a plus two. He's not undead. Uh, so we could add, we can take some help from Harsk, who will recharge his quarterstaff to send her a d an extra d4. Oh, that's what that's for. So d6 and d4 is better, I guess, than nothing. And she's looking to get an 8 across a d6 and a d4. Well, with these rolls, I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, there's a there's a 1. Oops. 1. And then she would need uh, nothing on this. I mean, there's, there's no way. So she's... I mean, reduce damage. Oh, 1. Brilliant. So one, two, three, four. So a four compared to a ten. So she takes all the damage. One, two, three, four, five. So it's. Oh wait, 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 wait. Okay. So she got four compared to. So she she's taking six damage. But I could recharge her armor to reduce that by three, therefore two three. 
which frankly is kind of a weird sort of blessing because we really need to cycle in some new cards into her hand. Um, so this guy's not defeated, so he goes back into the deck, and we can shuffle the deck. Cut, cut, cut the deck, sort of. Let's cut the deck there. Okay. Um, cool. That's the end of her turn. Not a very great turn, but... Um, one, two, three, four, five cards in her hand. Let's hope these are a little bit better than what she's been having. Well, she's got uh, healing and a cure and two blessings, three blessings. So that actually could be good. The healing especially could be good because I think everyone's going to need it. But really, I mean, what, what we're up against here is time. We only have three timer cards left and we've got just stacks and stacks and stacks. And you remember a couple of sessions ago, I said, because I didn't think my villain battle through and lost three turns, that could mean the end of the game. And I think, I think, I think it, I think it's meant that exactly. I think if, if I had six timer cards, I'd feel a lot better about my chances. Okay. Flipping over a timer. And it's Harsk's turn, so he gets to explore. Yeah, and he has to explore before he does anything. Oh yeah, we knew this. Okay, so this is a barrier, which he is able to evade by downing this ghostly form. He just steps onto the ethereal plane and bypasses the pit of Malfeshnikor. And I think he gets to explore again right afterwards. So that was a really, really good acquisition. Um, okay, so this is a arcane or a divine spell. Okay, that could be good. Intelligence. If he can roll a six, he gets this spell. Um, of course, actually it says if you do not have either the arcane or divine skill, banish this card. So I guess it's gone. I don't really understand that. Um, I feel like he should be able to acquire the spell and then give it to to uh, Kira, but I guess not, because it's not a scroll. It's not like a spell scroll, I guess. You're just learning the spell or something. So, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Okay, that was his turn. Before his Before the end of his turn, he gets to scry one. There's an ancient skeleton henchman. That could be, I mean, in theory, that would be good because in theory, he could close this location permanently. No, probably not. Maybe. He's got wisdom. A D6 of wisdom. So with a really good roll, he could close this location permanently. But um, I'm just not even sure if... Oh, and I forgot to have him contribute to her fight against the, the thing. He could have added a D4 to her... Her role, but I mean, she still she only rolled four. Like, yeah, okay. Anyway, um, so now he'll draw back up to five, which probably okay. So, oh, two blessings, okay. Crossbow, glaive, armor, and blessings. Now we're we 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 are running into a problem here. You know that technically, I because we're running out of time. I should be spending blessings to explore. Unfortunately, he only has one card in his in his discard deck. So he, he if he discards to explore, then he has zero health left. Which I mean that could work. It could work. In fact, let's do it. Why not? I mean, we're at that point, right? We're we're we are at the Did he did he scry? Well, I don't know. Oh, right. Yes, of course he did. It's the ancient skeleton henchman. Okay, that's fine. So, he is going to use his trusty quarterstaff that he does not have. Okay, that's fine. So, he's going to instead use his light crossbow and do a, yeah, a plus three for his ranged 
and then roll a d8 twice in hopes of getting a an 8. Because it's a piercing weapon, he's piercing uh, bolts, the difficulty of this creature is increased by 3, but he has a ranged bonus of 3, which cancels that out, essentially. And so it's just what is written on the card, which is a, a d8. So, or I mean an, an 8, rather. He's rolling 2 d8. One for his ranged, and one for using a crossbow. And he rolled an 8. That's without, that's without even a second roll. So he definitely beats the henchman, which means that he is able to attempt to close this location. And he absolutely has to roll the highest possible on a wisdom check. He's got a d6 for his wisdom, and that's what he has to roll. But he's got this blessing. And if he discards this blessing, he can add one card to the die. Or... That's all he can do. He can add one one die to his roll. Now, the unfortunate thing is that if he does that, then he'll have to draw back up to five. He only has one card in his deck. So if he does that, he will fall down and die. Harsk is about to take one for the team. Well, for Galarian, really. So, this is... Oh, first of all, we have to roll a d6, and if it comes up 1, okay, good. It didn't. If it had come up 1, that would have meant that that, that skeleton was actually undefeated. But it is defeated, so he has to make a wisdom 6 check. And he's going to do that with 1d6 for his wisdom die, and then because he's just discarded a blessing, 2d6. He rolled a 5 which does not close this location. So this is still an open location. And Harsk is dead. Why is he dead? Because he's only got... It's the end of his turn. He's got three cards in his hand. He is obligated to draw up to five cards in his hand, and he has no more cards to draw. So he is dead. Unless... Unless some of these... Do, do any of these... No. Yeah, all of her cure spells only work on her, or at, at her location. So he is alone in the desecrated vault. He's just fought an ancient skeleton. He managed to kill it, but his injuries were too great. And he falls and perishes. So that is Harsk. That's the end of Harsk's story. And probably the end of the story of this game, because um, so we've got one open location here. We've got a lone cleric, and only two more cards in the timer deck. If I were, if I were scripting this, obviously I would have her encounter the villain next, and it would be or or two cards from now. It would be the impossible. Unfortunately, this is unscripted. This is random. This is the game. So we're going to just tick over a timer card. Explore. Trapped passage. Let's see. She can do wisdom, perception, dexterity, or acrobatics. But she can explore again afterwards if she succeeds. Uh, perception is a d6. d6 plus 2. Um, oh, or Wisdom, it says, right? Yeah, Wisdom is a d12. She doesn't get her plus two bonus, because it's not Wisdom Divine, but Wisdom. Eleven. All right. So she passes through the trapped passageway unharmed. She ducks and dodges, does not get harmed by all the traps. If defeated, you can immediately explore again. All right. Blessing of Shaylin. It's 
So that's a wisdom check or a divine check rather. So it's a plus two um, and it only requires a five anyway, which she rolled. So she gets to acquire that blessing. However, she is in the temple of an evil goddess. And because of that, whenever she encounters a blessing, which she just did, you are dealt two points of mental damage that cannot be reduced. So yeah, she got the blessing, and she doesn't get to keep the blessing because they both go away. Okay. Well, as I have said often enough, I think, um, the real enemy here is the timer deck. So I'm going to use up I guess, reveal this card and choose a character at your location. Shuffle 1d4 random cards back into your deck. So that's two. Uh, so, I mean, I'm just doing this just sort of a just in case. I don't know. Like, um, I really don't know what scenario I'm, <laughs> what eventuality I'm planning for here. Health is not the issue, really. So there's uh, two, oh, plus one, plus one. So there's some more cards in her health, I guess. I actually did that because I was thinking I was going to get rid of this. But she doesn't have to. Um, oh, oh, and then it says, and then discard this deck, this card. Why does it say reveal and then discard? That feels strange. Okay. Succeed at a divine eight check to recharge. 12. All right, so she gets to recharge this spell, which is why I did it, because I want really just to cycle some more things into her hand, I guess. One, two, three. Because if she does, by some miracle encounter, that's exactly what I was looking for, the mace. By some miracle, she she uncovers the villain, then uh, I want her to be prepared. So I'm going to expend this, because again... The timer deck is my only enemy right now to explore. It's a blessing. Take two damage. I would rather not. Really? I would really, really rather not. Um, I guess I'll, I'll send out the healing and the, the armor. And roll the Wisdom die to try to acquire this spell. Acquired. Three cards. She can now discard her this Blessing, I think, to explore again. A Yeth Hound. Alright, so this is not undead. It's an outsider. Nine to defeat. Well, luckily we've got our melee weapon here which is a d8 in addition to a plus two bonus for melee and a d6 for melee. So she is going to be swinging just with the raw power of, of her mace arm, really. Um, that's a nine minus two, seven across a d6 and a d8. That's a six. She can't roll anything less than a one on this d6, so she... Defeats the Yeth Hound. Okay, so that's the end of her turn. So she'll draw back up to five cards. She's got a Blessing, Half Plate Armor, Guidance, Mace, Blessing of Lamash 2. And this card is upside down. There we go. Okay. All right. So this is the last timer card. So the game essentially is over when I have to tick over the next timer card. So we have this turn, and then we've lost. Slashing Blade. Um, that's a dex disable check of 9. If undefeated, you take 1d4 damage. Okay. Well, we've got half plate armor to help us with that. Uh, we could add one to our check. I don't feel like that's really worth it. I think I'm just gonna do, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rely on the armor, I think. So this is a dex check of nine. She can't, she cannot do that. 
that's not within her ability. Oh, her dex is only a d4. That's even worse than I realized. Okay, well, that changes my plan. Oh wait, no, that doesn't change my plan. It doesn't matter. So she fails. And really the d4 roll isn't a check, it's to determine how much damage. One point of damage. Um, recharge this card to reduce combat damage. Oh, this isn't combat damage. Alright, so she does have to take some damage, and I think the only sensible thing for her to do right now would be to banish this card to reduce all damage to zero. There. Done. I mean, this is the last... this is it. Everything... We're, we have to spend everything. <laughs> this is... this is where... this is it. Like, really, really it. Okay. So, I mean, technically, once again, the game w is kind of over, but her her turn isn't over yet. And we do have two blessings, and both of these blessings allow us to explore. So, we are going to discard... Oh, look at that. I could have discarded that to succeed at that dex. But what I did makes more sense, under the circumstances. Discard to explore. So we're discarding that. We're exploring, and it is a bunyip. A bunyip. Um, okay, a bunyip is a, an aquatic creature. Uh, before the encounter, succeed on a wisdom 9, or the difficulty is increased by 1. Of all checks, increased by 1 for the rest of the turn. Oh, you horrible, horrible creature. Okay, wisdom check is a d12 for her. She got a 10. And so that negates that that penalty. Now she has to go to combat with this thing. Of course, she does have a mace, which is going to be, again, her d6, a d8, plus her plus 2. So she's got to get a 7 across a d8 and a d6. So that's a 4. A pretty good start and a two not a great start so that's six seven eight so she does not defeat the bunyip she has to get rid of something so i guess she'll get rid of guidance i was hoping to save that for something much more exciting um so that is not defeated and so he goes back into the deck I have no idea. I just have a feeling that this is not the deck with the villain in it at this point. It, I could be wrong. Um, last ditch hope, last ditch effort here is going to be to to discard the Lamash two blessing. We've got a mace and a desperate prayer to Saren Ray that this is the villain. That's amazing. It's the villain. Okay. So this is not the this is not undead, so she's got very little to fall back on here. Before the encounter, each character at this location must succeed on a constitution fortitude seven or take damage. Okay. I think we can do this. Her constitution seven her constitution fortitude is d6 plus 3. So she needs to roll a 4 or better on this d6. And she rolled a 6. So she does not take damage. This is amazing, I have to say. So she has got just one... This is it. This is a wing and a prayer. She is going to go to battle with this creature with a mace and the faith that she has in Saren Ray. So that is going to be a plus two for her melee. It's going to be a plus six, or I mean, not a plus six, a d6 for her strength and a d8 for this mace. Additionally, she may discard this card to add another d4. So she is definitely discarding that. She has a d4 now. So she's looking for a 10, total of 10 across 
A d4, a d6, and a d8. Can she do it? She rolled a 1 for her first. <laughs> for her first check. Alright. She needs 9 across a d6 and a d8. She rolls another 1. Alright. She needs a... What's that, a 4? So she needs an 8 on this d8 in order to beat this dragon. I just don't see this happening. I do not see this happening. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. 8. That doesn't even make any sense. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 beats Black Fang. Oh, no, it doesn't. Because this... This location is not closed. So this creature actually escapes to this location. Or, or technically we don't know um, where it escapes to. It, it would escape to... It kills. It kills us is what it does. <laughs> because we don't have a timer deck, so we're supposed to take... No, no, we, we, we add a blessing, yeah, from the deck, because she did defeat it. So we would add a blessing, we would mix up the cards, like so, and then you put one of the cards in each location, and then you shuffle the location. So, at that point, it would be the end of her turn, she would try to draw back up to five cards, she doesn't have five cards to draw, so she's dead. And then we would tick over the timer deck, but there is no deck, there's no card there to, to turn over. And so the game has finished. This game over screen comes up. So that is the bitter taste of defeat, I'm afraid. We have, uh, we have failed in our fight against Black Fang. And one can only assume that Bla Black Fang emerges from its, its hidden uh, dungeon and wreaks havoc upon Sandpoint, probably killing everyone there. So... It's really too bad that we we failed to defeat Black Fang. But you know what? There are lots of other characters in the box. Maybe they bravely go and repeat this adventure. Who knows? So that's that's the um that's the adventure. That's the perils of the lost of the lost coast. You know, it's just it's amazing how much of a challenge it actually is. Um even, you know, I, I stacked my deck a little bit. I had a uh, an extra card in there, the, the medallion. Uh, they both had, they had a pretty good decks there in the middle. Yeah, I mean, the, it's, he had the special armor from Shackles and Skulls. So, um, yeah, it's a tough, it's a, it, it is a tough game. It keeps you on your toes from start to finish, really. And, and even when you just start to think that it's getting too easy, then something happens and you realize, no, it's not easy. It's it's very randomized. And at some point... Oh, I, I do wonder where the... Where did the villain end up, I wonder? Uh, I don't know. I don't know where that is. Okay, so, yeah. Well, one of those two locations, anyway. For, for, um, yeah. So that's... Uh, it's, a, it's a really, really fun game, and it's eternally challenging. It just doesn't... It doesn't stop being a challenge, as you could tell from this defeat so anyway thanks for watching thanks for bearing with me as i as i failed in my mission to save galarian sorry about that but highly recommending again pathfinder adventure card game it's a lot of fun thanks for watching